Hello and good evening students and welcome back to Global Online Platform. This is Chandni Swarnakar and today we are going to cover George Orwell of course because um, it's a prominent writer. He is a prominent writer and we are going to cover in two parts. Uh, the works are many and we need time for that, okay? So, this is going to be a part one on George Orwell. You can get my lecture at 8 p.m. and excuse me. Uh, if you can hear a background voice, okay, or song, I cannot do anything for that. So now, but before diving into the video, let me share that there is a great opportunity to prepare smartly for the April 2024 set. Global Online is offering a comprehensive literature course. You will have access to video lectures that explain concepts using short and effective methods. The course also provides downloadable PDF notes for your convenience. You will additionally get mock tests that stimulate real exam condition boosting your final preparation and the best part is that you are getting complete course of paper one for free okay so to learn more reach out to the provided contact number now if you want to free uh, watch the free videos basically first download the global online app once you are in head to the source section there you'll find details of all the courses use the search bar to directly type on the course name and you'll see an overview along with fees for the duration click on the content section here okay and you will find unit wise folders in each unit you will get theory lectures mock tests evaluation notes and uh, mcqs of course no need for extra reading now if you decide to join the paid course do remember that we are starting a new batch from 22nd of february as I am telling you continuously, we are going to start a new batch from 22nd of February. So, if you are interested, uh, you can add, okay, you can join. Now, you will also be added to a WhatsApp group. In that group, you will receive PDF for each session along with the videos link on a daily basis, okay. So, it's a great way to stay connected and get additional resources. So, happy learning, of course, with me. Now, let's start with George Orwell first, okay. So, let me tell you, a lot of times I have uh, told you this, that you need to remember the prominent writer's duration, okay. So, George Orwell was born in 1903 and died in 1950, very short span of time he lived, okay. And the original name of George Orwell was Eric Arthur Blair, Eric Arthur Blair and I have never seen a prominent writer investing only in one genre, okay, be it T.S. Eliot, be it D.H. Lawrence, G.B. Shaw or uh, here we are coming with George Orwell. So, he also contributed to English novels, essays, journals, critics as a criticism, sorry, as a critic he also worked, so in criticism also he contributed. Now, very interesting and uh, very relatable thing that he was actually born in Motihari and actually it's uh, in Bihar right now okay so Bengal presidency that they, then it was a Bengal presidency but now it's in Bihar Motihari Bihar okay Central University of I think Motihari now we have covered the basic idea or the, the detail of George Orwell let's cover the works of George Orwell okay so the first is Burmese Days. Burmese Days. It was published in 1934. And the very interesting thing, it was set in British uh, colonial period. Okay, so it was like um, during the winning days of empire when Burma was ruled from Delhi as a part of British India. So it was uh, about that time. And it was actually set in British Burma. It was not Indian Burma. Okay, because a British... Britishers were ruling at the time and novel serves as a portrait of the dark side of the British Raj. Of course, nowadays, of course, we can see the uh, brighter side as well, but it actually shows the darker side. Burmese days, okay. Moving on. Second work, I think the voice uh, keep on raising a little bit higher, right? Okay. Second work, A Clergyman's Daughter, Clergyman's Daughter. So, the title itself is telling that we are talk, we're going to talk about a clergyman's daughter, okay. So, she must be a daughter of clergyman, 1935 and the protagonist is Dorothy Hare, Dorothy. And I am very uh, happy to hear that so many times it's 
being repeated that Mary, Mary is the character, Mary, Elizabeth, Mary, Elizabeth. So, well, he got a new name, Dorothy Hare. Now, daughter of clergyman whose life is turned upside down when she suffers an attack of amnesia. Just imagine her living a life, happy life, and went the went through something all of a sudden and everything just turned out okay turned out upside down how will you feel so exactly the same thing is happening with dorothy here okay so of course the title source is very confusing because there are other um, references as well okay but we'll focus on dh lawrence's 1915 novel the rainbow Right, suggested that Orwell took the title from D. H. Lawrence's 1950 novel, The Rainbow. And I must tell you, if you're preparing for, uh, like directly you are going for uh, assistant professor, so you will get a syllabus and there in particular syllabus you will get The Rainbow, you need to read it. So, it's better to read it now, read the thorough summary and get to know, okay. Now, Basically suggested that Orwell took the title from D. H. Lawrence's 1915 novel The Rainbow and the references Miss Inger was a Bachelor of Arts who had studied at Newnham. She was a clergyman's daughter of good family. So from here it is suggested that George Orwell took the title. Okay. So this is it. Moving on to the next one and very famous, I personally love this work because um, it's like it's like a ch children book but somewhere deep down uh, it is hiding something, okay, children cannot understand. So the third animal farm which is basically which was published in 1945 and it's a beast fable, okay, so I have already talked about it, what is beast fable, if you don't know, <laughs> please Please have the guts to accept you are not a good student of literature, okay? Or do read it. So, it's a form of a satirical allegorical novella. It's a novella and satirical allegorical novella because you will see allegory here. It's also a satire because uh, first political uh, situations are being satired here. Okay, so the original title is Animal Farm Colin, A Fairy Story. Animal Farm Colin a fairy story right and <clears throat> see what you're going to see here uh, the background the hidden meaning so the allegory or story with the hidden political meaning of the russian revolution of 1917 or the civil war that followed 1918 to 20 like it's a civil war the russian revolution of 1917 that actually took place in uh, from 1918 to 20 Okay, and the later rise of Stalin's dictatorship in the Soviet Union. Okay, so you are going to talk about three things. Russian Revolution of 1917. Second, the civil war that followed 1918 to 20. And the later rise of Stalin's dictatorship. So, of course, dictatorship is always bad in the Soviet Union. We are going to talk about three things in this particular work. Okay, so do relate. Now, let's cover the major characters of this. And the significance of these characters you need to understand and what represent what you need to understand that as well so the major characters includes Napoleon first the Napoleon now it actually represents Napoleon represents Soviet leader Joseph Stalin okay so later rise of Stalin okay uh, Stalin's dictatorship of course so Napoleon represents that and his ruthless towards his enemies, ordering the executions of those who dare to cross him. Just imagine, I am not uh, happy with my enemies. Of course, nobody uh, can be happy with them. But uh, you are actually became ruthless. Uh, as always, my battery. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Now the second character, Snowball. Okay. It represents the banished russian leader leon Trotsky. okay so the third character is mr johns okay so mr johns represent whom mr john represents Tsar nicholas the second okay Tsar nicholas the second so jars basically mr john's uh, neglect basically mr john's neglect and mistreated uh, his animals because of that uh, 
the his enemies rebel against him okay so that happened there yeah. now moving on to squela wait a minute yeah squela okay so he actually uh, a master of propaganda modeled after the nazi propagandist joseph goebbels okay uh, who represents joseph goebbels squela represents joseph goebbels okay goebbels and his energetic speaking style makes him an appealing orator like uh, if you are a good orator even you have a bad intention you can actually persuade uh, people that's a that's not a good sign but yeah it happens now next is boxer box is a horse here okay and actually represents a proletariat according to marxism there are uh, two categories two class proletariat and bourgeoisie so boxer basically belongs to proletariat category or working class people who work really hard who uh, are very hard working kind of people okay so boxer belongs to that category now the next one old major old major represents karl marx of course i have already mentioned karl marx here not karl marx basically marxism so of course it's related so karl marx or vladimir lenin so old major is often interpreted to represent karl marx or vladimir lenin there is a confusion here but you need to get that moving on to benjamin there is one more character he might have the capacity to educate the animals about the pig's intention but his silence allows the pig to take over unimpeded so what happens just imagine it represents a represents those educated people who know that this is wrong but uh, they are actually um chose to be silent okay and here that actually played a very uh, important role he might have the capacity to educate the animals about the pig's intention but his silence allows the pig to take over and impeded now so let's talk about the story okay so the story is also very interesting the story unfolds on manor farm so manor farm is manor farm the name of the farm where the mistreated animals rebel against their human owner mr jones i have already mentioned mr jones okay led by the pigs napoleon and snowball so who um, were leading the battle leading the rebel napoleon and snowball okay now initially the animals established a utopian society i have already uh, discussed this utopian dystopian society utopian is better Uh, society than you are living in okay everything is good equality prevailed okay this things a utopian society based on the principles of animalism where all animals are equal so here it actually initially they were talking about this but later what happened uh, you need to know however the pigs gradually consolidate power and betray the ideals of equality okay so they decided to make the utopia society but what happened they actually betrayed themselves now napoleon representing joseph stalin becomes a tyrant exploiting the other animal for his benefit so i have already uh, said that he became uh, he actually represented a uh, uh, dictatorship right so started doing exploitation and all so the pigs rewrite the commandments of animalism to justify their actions reflecting the manipulation of truth in totalitarianism real regimes okay so they started whatever they have decided i am going to tell you that okay so then they actually changed earlier they were saying that two legs uh, a person with two legs uh, uh, is our enemies but after that it changed as the pigs align with humans the once revolutionary ideals of animal farm are abandoned because uh, they started rebelling against women or oh, eventually they uh, align with humans so all the things are just it's like abandoning them the novels explore themes of power of course corruption because people were corrupt and manipulation of language okay now you need to know that uh, there were seven commandments of animal they were decided okay so this seven commandments are very important for you to know the first is whatever goes upon two legs is an enemy as i told you this 
whatever goes upon two legs is an enemy second whatever goes upon four legs or has wings is a friend okay so animals basically animals animals are brothers okay or sisters third no animal shall wear clothes fourth no animal shall sleep in a bed so i think whoever is uh, letting <laughs> is dogs wear clothes these animals must be upset with them no animal shall sleep in a bed no animal shall drink in a- drink alcohol no animal shall kill any other animal all animals are equal okay so these are the seven commandments but uh, things changes you get to know so there are some major uh, or important quotes that you need to know and they ask questions on this okay so the first is whatever goes upon two legs is an enemy what whatever goes upon two legs is an enemy as i have mentioned already whatever goes upon four legs or has wings is a friend and remember also that in fighting against man we must not come to resemble him got it who said this old major second we cause strong clever or simple we are all brothers theek okay. hai okay no animal must ever kill any other animal all animals are equal who said this old major boxer the horse was very cute not cute in a sense but um not a physical sense he was cute in his own manner characterism was very nice i felt i have no wish to take life not even human life so who said this boxer very nice then four legs good two legs bad so i told you that the commandments were just uh, turned upside down and changed okay so four legs good two legs bad snowball who said this snowball now fifth the last one the creatures outside looked from pig to man and from man to pig and from pig to man again but already it was impossible to say which was which who said this narrator because at the end uh, narrator also felt okay what is happening dude what is going on okay so we have covered the important work of jor or well today that is animal farm and go read it again thank you so much and we'll meet in the next section okay so all the very best